Sorry, people, for having me today, and thank you all for attending. Uh, my name is Tamer. You can just talk to Tam uh, if you like. I work at Business Streaming, and today I'll be talking about something that I just learned this year, 2018, with my team, which is recursion schemes. So, what's, let's start from the beginning. What is recursion schemes? So, I will describe it as a programming technique that can allow you to refactor recursion or factor recursion out of your code base. So I could use a library that does the recursion for me. So I can just use it and abstract over the techniques or styles or schemes. That's why it's called recursion schemes. So I'll start, I'll describe one recursion scheme, just one trick. Uh, so we're gonna talk about JSON. So we have this JSON object on the left hand side. So first we will represent this data in uh, the memory. So we're going to write our own classes that represent what JSON is. Then we will try to write a function that serializes this tree or this JSON data structure from the memory to a string representation similar to the one on the site. Maybe we use the string to send it over the wire or store it in the database or whatever. We first, in the talk, I'm going to write the normal, straightforward uh, way without, with, with recursion. Uh, then I will point to just what, what's annoying me with the implementation with recursion, then apply recursion schemes step by step till we reach uh, the ultimate solution. All right, so let's first describe JSON in the memory. So this is typical JSON tree uh, or algebraic data type. You can find this in play JSON, Cersei, whatever. They're all more or less the same. So say a JSON value could be null, could be string, number, boolean. Those are all, if we are using tree terminology, those are all leaf nodes, just the simple values. Or there could be um, more complex values like an array and object. So array is recursive in its, in its nature. It could contain zero or more JSON values. JS object is we could be represented as a map from the keys are always string, and the value could be JSON, could be any of those, right? So this is how we represent the JSON on the site. Now written as code. Now, let's try to implement a uh, serialized function to convert this object here into, um, into string. So we have on the side the same JSON, but in the graphical representation. So I'm going to show how recursion works uh, graphically. So let's first write our serialized function. So we have the input JSON. The output depends on the type. So if it's null, for example, Serializing it's straightforward, just to present the string null. In any of the leaf nodes, also the implementation is straightforward. String, you put double quotes, boolean, put true or false, or whatever. Now, the other complex nodes, like array and object, so an array is a list of other JSON. So first we have to serialize every single element in the list, then you compose those strings together into one string. So uh, we do it like that, uh, first map on every element in the, in the array, call serialize, so here's recursion, then after we finish, uh, just compose them and put, uh, make it like a proper array. Similar also for, uh, for JS object. And now the execution is, can be a bit boring, but bear, bear with me a little bit. So, we want to serialize the JSON, so we start from the very beginning, which is a JS object. So first we stop at JS object, which first we run v.mapValues serialize. Before we can go forward to the other half of the line, we have to do the recursion, do call serialize for every value in the JS object. So we find ourselves calling serialize one more time, but this time the JSON is JS array in this example. 
the same, sorry if it's boring for you, again, left hand side, we have to first do the recursion. So we will keep going until we finally hit a leaf node where there's no recursion anymore and we can just return a value. Do the same. Now, here at this point, do I have a laser pointer here? Is it showing? I can't see anything. Anyway, I'll just, I'll just use my hands. So at this point, we have already finished. We are just here in this uh, dot here. We did the left-hand side. We have now three, a list of three strings. We are now composing them into one string. Right. My problem with this code is that we have on one line two concerns. We have the concern on the left-hand side of the recursion itself. This is how recursion works. This is how our data structure is defined. The right-hand side, this is the actual implementation of serialize. So let's say if you want to define another function, let's say serialize to binary or whatever, we'll find ourselves having something that's very similar to this. The left-hand side is not going to change. We have to iterate, we have to just traverse the data structure, but the right-hand side might change. So we are now violating a uh, couple of um, uh, programming um, standards. So, our same, so here we have lots of two concerns on one programming line. We have also uh, a loss of re um, duplicated code. So every time we have to duplicate this side. What I really aim to do here, and using recursion schemes, is to reach something like that. Just get rid of the recursion. It should be implemented somehow behind the scenes. We'll see, we'll see, so this is not working yet, so we'll see how to make this work. At the end of the slides, we'll make this example just about serialize and no recursion in this code. So, recursion schemes was, very, uh, was first uh, published in a paper with this funny uh, name. Uh, the paper is a bit more mathematical, but I'm not gonna through, I'm not gonna go through mathematics. I'm gonna just show just plain Scala code. So, let's apply the paper. Let's apply uh, recursion schemes on our code base step by step. So, this is the same JSON data structure. I only took some things away, just removed like final case, just to make some more space in the slides. But more or less, it's, it's the exact same data structure. All right, so let's start the transformation step by step. So number one, locate where is the recursion in your data structure, where, it, where you recursively um, refer to JSON. So here we have JS array and JS object, they recursively, uh, they recursively use the JSON. Uh, they are defined in a recursive manner. So first step, remove the reference to JSON and put instead a type parameter. Let's say it's not just JSON, it's a JSON of something. And this, thump, this something in JS array is also could be anything, type parameter A. And in case of, of nodes, like uh, leaf nodes, like null and string, those, they didn't, they didn't have reference to JSON from the beginning, right? So we can safely say is they are JSON of nothing, okay? So let's, let's see how we're gonna, so we can still write the exact same uh, JSON object from the previous slide, exactly as it is. But can anybody guess what would be the type signature What's the type of val obi-wan here? Sorry? JS object any. Uh, JS any, any other uh, suggestions? All right, so let's, let's see. Actually, the type you probably is very, gonna be very tricky to write it yourself. So it's a JS object because here we created JS object. But you can just say JS object, you have to say JS object of something. If we write JS of any, this would compile. 
but there is more specific type that the compiler knows about. So if, if you use the type inference, you're going to get more um, strict type. So it's a JS object, and in, inside it, there is JS string and more JS array and stuff. So it's JS object of JSON. But then JSON of what? JSON. Of JSON? Yeah. You get the point. So luckily, at the end of the tree, we have a JS string, which is a JSON of nothing. So we can just stop here, not go infinite. Now, this is a bit dirty. Uh, luckily, we were lucky here. We could just write count how many levels in the tree and just write it ourselves. But this is not usually the case. Sometimes, let's say you're loading this JSON from a database, so you can just, you don't know what's the depth of the tree. So th this can count the depth of the tree here. One, two, three, four, five, six levels, okay? You can't do that with an object that's loaded from the database that's not known at the compile time. We will see in a few slides how to get around that. But for now, just enjoy that the type signature actually tells you what's the depth of the tree. All right, so we have now just added this weird type parameter that made us know about the depth of the tree. But it also has another side effect, a more powerful one. So. Remember here, JSON is A, it could be anything. So you could have JS array of JSON, or you could have JS array of string, for example. Maybe it doesn't make sense what JS array, then it's a list of something that's not JSON. Why, why on earth I would want to do that? Actually, it makes our data structure, just having it JS object of string, this represents a partially serialized JSON. So let's imagine, remember in the animation before we were doing recursion. So let's imagine we are the last step of our recursion. We have already uh, serialized the bottom of the tree. So we still have the top, which is the JSON object, and we have the values, which are strings, two strings. We could represent this state, this snapshot of time during recursion inside the same data structure. We could say, oh, it's a JS object of string. So this means it's a one, like the depth of the tree is just one. The keys are string, the same, but the values are not JSON anymore. They are serialized JSON. So if I gave you this function and I told you, please serialize it to, sorry, if I gave you this data structure and I told you, please serialize it to JSON, there's no recursion needed, it's just one level. Just apply, remember the right hand side, I told you that this is the one we care about. Yeah, this is already JS object of string, just apply the actual logic of serialize. No need to worry about recursion. Okay, so this is only if we have like the last step, like or a tree of depth one. All right, so this is a tree of depth one or this is the last step in recursion, and this is just the step before it. Just one step back. We have two uh, layer of two. So on the left hand side, so, yeah, here. So the very last one is JSON of string. The one before it is a JSON of JSON of string. So we just need to solve a little problem. We know how to serialize the one down at the bottom, JSON of string, that's straightforward. We want to be able to convert JSON of JSON of a string to a JSON of a string. We need a, a dynamic way to help the library, let's say we're using recursion schemes library. We want, uh, we want to provide a mechanical way of converting JSON of JSON of string to JSON of string. Or to generalize it a bit more, we want to be able to convert JSON of A to JSON of B. If we could first get this in place, we can, we can say, oh, now the, the A is JSON of string and the B is string, so it's straightforward to do it. So let's first 
focus on that. We want a way to convert JSON of A to JSON of B. So, if we have used Scala, I'm sure most of you have done, uh, using options or using sequences, I'm sure you have used the function map before. So you have my option dot map, and you pass a function. So let's say the the object the the option was option of int, and you run run something that was like two string or something. So it becomes an option of string. So this is the same pattern. We have a container of A convert to container of B. So we want to define the map function. Instead of going to trade JSON and write oh def map or something, uh, we can do it in a different way. So there is a construct or a class uh, called functor. You can find it in Scala Z or Cats. So just to overly simplify one fu what functor is. It's basically we took the map function out of the list of the option, we defined it in its own. So let's say for the sake of good reusability, for the sake of separation of concerns, or just to allow us to define map retroactively uh, on existing data structures. So what we care about is the map function, but it's defined on its own object, right? So this map function takes the JSON of A takes a function from A to B, should, uh, should return JSON of B. So let's implement it together. So depends on what the JSON is. So null string of the leaf nodes, they were actually JSON of nothing. They did not have A, so nothing to do. Just return the exact same thing. JSON of nothing is valid JSON of A and it's also valid JSON of B, so nothing to do. Now, if they are array or an object, they're going to be a bit more work to do. So, if we have now an array of A's, we want to convert to an array of B's, we can just cheat and use the map function, delegate the map function from uh, the Scala collection. It's easy. And similar also for JS object, we use map values, which would convert every A to a B, given this function. Right, so now we have our map. Now we can convert JSON A to JSON B. That is cool. So this is the second piece of the puzzle, defining a functor instance. The last piece of the puzzle is to solve this problem, like loading JSON from the database. Again, we don't know the depth of this tree at, right, at the time of writing this code. I can't say JSON of JSON of. This is not possible. So I want a way to say, it's the JSON of whatever, just JSON, right? The solution is a bit, it's a bit more tricky, so just try to focus, like shake your head or something. We're gonna borrow um, a concept from mathematics, the fixed function. So, is defined as that, fix of f equal f of fix of f. So this is normally used to locate um, the fixed point. So if you like have a graph or something, you can say, oh, this function f, uh, locate the point where the input equal the output of f. Like say, f of 0 0.2 equals 0 0.2. Yay, we found this center point or whatever. We don't care about that. All we care about is the shape of the definition because the shape is recursive in its nature. So if you want to expand fix of f to f of fix of f, and if you want to go and expand once more, it's going to be f of f of fix of f. So basically, it's infinite recursion done for us. So let's try to translate this to Scala, or rather, not not just normal Scala, it's types. So this is not a function. We got to represent fix as type. We're going to say fix of f equal f of fix of f, exactly the same signature. So what this weird thing give us? So we could now say this function returns fix of JSON. And just tell the compiler, oh, good, good luck working with that. Expand it for me. going to be JSON of fix of JSON. Once more, JSON of JSON of fix of JSON. So basically we tell the compiler, deal with it. This almost works, almost works, but not yet. It's almost there. 
So the problem is you can't, this is not legal on type alias in Scala, right? You can't, you can't do the recursion inside the type, uh, inside the type alias. But you can define a class that is perfectly possible. You say here, so it is fixed with f and instead of equal, it's a member. So it will not going to be done automatically for us. We'll have to say dot unfix. Get, so every time we want to peel a layer from the tree, we're going to say dot unfix. I peel one layer. Peel, peel one layer. All right? This is the second or the last piece of the puzzle. And now, uh, oh yeah, before that. Uh, so here's our JSON and uh, let's now write it. Let's use this fix now. So, uh, the, so here, this fix is a wrapper for, for JSON. So the only uh, tax we have to pay is every time we write JS object or JS string, we have to wrap it with fix. It's gonna be just like lots of boilerplate in your code base. So it's gonna look something like that. Just fix around everything. But you can just write your own smart constructor or something to just hang it under the carpet. All right, so we are now ready for our recursion scheme. So our first recursion scheme is called CATA, short for catamorphism. I know it doesn't help, but the name CATA is derived from the word catastrophe. Why catastrophe? So the mathematicians or programmers writing this paper thought, OK, we have tree of JSON or whatever, and we want to convert it, serialize it to one value. So you have a big tree and you can have, yeah, so you have a catastrophe that you broke everything and became one value. So here, here that's the origin of the word kata. And the Scala libraries, they uh, uh, adopted also the same name as described in the paper. So we will use kata, but probably you know the word fault from uh, Scala collections. So that's basically the same thing. All right, so kata is defined. As, I'm going to show you how, how, how it's written now, but I'm going to show you how to use it. So kata asks you to write one level of your logic. So don't care about recursion. Just give me the right-hand side. Remember, the right-hand side we care about. That's, that's what we need to feed to kata. I'm going to give you a JSON of three, a tree of level one. That's the easy one that no recursion needed. Just convert this one level to string, and that's it. I'll take care of recursion for you. So let's, let's first implement our logic uh, using kata, then uh, actually see how kata will be defined. So the implementation here, the leaf knows where easy from the beginning, so there is nothing changed, they're still easy. Now the leaf, the not leaf knows, sorry, the complex cases like array and object, now they become tremendously easy. So this is only the right hand side, we don't care about recursion, just focus on serialization. The type of V here, remember this was J JSON of string. So this is list of the string, one like the last level, no more no more JSON inside it. It's not recursive anymore. Right, this works. Trust me. Uh, I'm gonna show you now what's remaining in my slides. I'm gonna show you how kata is defined. Then we're gonna do the same animation we did before on the serialization, but using all pieces of the puzzle, everything on one slide, and hopefully this would make it uh, a bit clear. So, I've defined here kata in a simple way uh, for readability sake, but if you are using a library, uh, I'm gonna show you a couple of libraries. They are not written like that in any way. Just, they, are, they are focused on could use, and I don't care about could use here, I just want it to be clear. So, kata is defined, so basically kata does the recursion for you. So first step in kata is to uh, expand the tree, do the recursion. Just by the help of functor, see if it's JS object, then uh, propagate the call to kata into every element in the tree. 
If it's not showing well here, I will show you an animation. But for now, just get the, the, the gist of it. So first step, we expand the tree till we get like partially serialized JSON. Then the next step would be calling F, which is this piece of logic, to just finalize it, call the last step, convert this tree of partially serialized JSON into actual JSON one string. So let's, let's see everything in one slide. So here's our old piece of the puzzle. This is the serialized logic. I, sh I remove all the cases that we don't care about. So we have only string array and object. Here, this is the map definition. I also uh, remove the case we don't care about. And finally, here is the definition of kata. Okay, so that's all what we need to use recursion schemes. On the right hand side, here's our JSON. Uh, it's now wrapped in fix. So it's like fix of everything is just wrapped inside fix. Now, let's start executing step by step. So, first line, we have obi one which is the reference to the top of the tree. Call kata on it. So, we jump here. First thing to do, call f.map. What do we pass to f.map? We pass unfix, which is reference to the red area, just the actual JSON inside fix. So we peel the fix, and we have a reference to the actual JSON inside it. So this is the first parameter to map. The second parameter is recursive reference to kata again that should be passed down the tree to every element. So let's go call map. We have sent a JS object, so we land in this line. This here is map from string to fix of JSON because the rest of the tree is wrapped inside fix. We have f here, which is this underlined line, which calls kata on uh, whatever JSON you pass to, to it. And the way map is defined is to recursively go through every value inside our map and just pass the f down the tree. So the effect of that, we are basically traversing the tree, going through top to bottom, passing down the, the, uh, the, um, the call to kata. So again, we go to kata. This time we have array. We call f.map. So we go now here back to an array, which again, recursively, but I, I'm sure it's now became boring. So we're, we're going to keep alternating between map and fix, just traversing the tree, traversing the tree, till we hit, we hit a leaf node. Now we start actually doing uh, some serialization. So we have a JS string. JS string is defined in map. There's no recursion here. This is like this is the termination of the recursion. You now usually write the recursion, there should be like f and else, and there is a like a base case or something where you stop recursion. This is so the base case is encoded inside the functor. So the map says, okay, nothing actually to do, just return the same. So we now finally now started to jump to the next, the second line and the last line of kata. We have a partially serialized JSON, which is string, it's, it's simple actually, so no, uh, we're sure there's no node under it. We go now call f, which is the actual logic of serialization. We call uh, JS string, which just wraps it with uh, double codes. Hmm. We are done now with the first element. We repeat the same for every element in the JS array. All right. So we are now just here, this area. We have already done the map on all uh, the elements inside the array. We have just Remove that, and now we have uh, we can we now return JS array of of a string that contains three strings. So now this is the 
partial. This is the reference now. It's, it now became, instead of JSON, of fixed of JSON, it's a JSON of string directly, one level. What to do? Now call our serialization logic. Here is our one, uh, one level of tree, one like uh, JS array of strings. This is the actual serialization logic. There is no, uh, there is no recursion needed. Just wrap it with uh, whatever to make it a proper JSON. And that's it. We have done our first recursion scheme, the kata. So hopefully, uh, you know now how kata works behind the scenes. You know that recursion schemes is not like magic or something. It's just something you can literally define yourself in one slide. If it's the whole idea fits in one slide. I've shown you kata, which is the first uh, or one of the functions in recursion schemes. There's lots and lots of them. Uh, you can use libraries. Uh, there is uh, Matryoshka, there is Drosty, and there's one that's not released called Turtles. Uh, if you use all, one of these libraries, you have to provide your data structure, JSON or whatever your data structure is, you define a functor, or sometimes you define traverse for more use cases, and you literally unlock a world of recursion, like lots of functions. Kata is just one of them. So Kata gives a tree, takes a tree, and returns one, uh, one value. There is anamorphism, the opposite of it. Takes one value, like a seed value, and lets you build a tree out of it. And there is something to like uh, convert a tree of JSON to a tree of YAML or whatever. All of this is already uh, implemented for you. All you need is just implement functor or traverse and just use all of these. They are out there for you. Uh, more resources, so the code for the slides uh, is on my GitHub. I called it recursion list. That's cool. Uh, there's also both uh, Scala talks and one uh, blog post. I think I use these to actually learn about recursion schemes. So, uh, question time.